All right, we're back just to give another quick update, and we are going to try to do this every hour on the hour as best as we can. Uh, one of the things when I start out here is I just want to remind everybody that the information we have that's coming out is preliminary. We're trying to give you as much information as we possibly can in a timely way where we're not going to impact a criminal investigation, impact the safety of those on the scene actively looking for this individual, uh, or impact the safety of anybody else. So please keep that in mind. Information might change, okay? Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the commander. He's going to go over and talk about the initial scene response, uh, what that sounded like, what that looked like. Greetings, Commander Chris O'Neill, Highland Park Police, last name O-N-E-I-L-L. This morning at 10.14 a.m., Highland Park Police and Fire Department units were on scene for the 4th July Parade that started at City Hall at St. John's by the train station, that, which ran to Central Avenue and then west to Sunset Park. Uh, around 10.14 p.m., we heard uh, loud reports, which we perceived as gunfire. Highland Park Police Parade units immediately ran to the plaza area, the source, to locate and identify the source of the, no the noise and the gunshots and gunfire. We uh, immediately identified that where people were down, that we had numerous people injured and shot. We communicated that information with our police dispatch, coordinated a medical response with the fire department, and began setting up a inner and outer perimeter, and also requested additional outside resources. We established a command post staging area here at the fire station on Central Avenue, and we continued to uh, obtain information or gather information to try to coordinate who was doing the shooting and where that person was last seen. Firearm evidence was located on a rooftop of a nearby business that was secured. A uh, suspect description that we had at the time was broadcasted on the police radio and shared with the uh, responding and non-scene units. Highland Park Police and fire personnel began transporting injured parties to the Highland Park Police Department and additional resources helped us at the scene. Uh, we had an on-scene police commander, which was myself. Our patrol supervisor handled city-wide command for any other incidents, and then we had a commander assigned here at the fire station for the command post. Most importantly, as far as the investigative aspect goes of this, and this is two-pronged at this time. Number one, uh, we are aggressively looking for the individual who is responsible uh, for the shooting. Number two, we have the criminal investigation that is occurring simultaneously. We're asking anybody with any video surveillance that they may have, please review your cell phones if you were snapping pictures in the area of 2nd and Central today. That could help investigators. They may see something in there that may be useful and allow them to proceed further with the investigation. Any business owners in that area, we're asking please review your video surveillance. Uh, if you have any video surveillance of that area at that time, even if you don't see anything in there, we would love to be able to take a look at that so we can further our investigation. Again, the FBI is working in conjunction with us. Uh, we have well over 100 law enforcement officers out here on the scene doing the investigation on one side and doing the apprehension efforts on the other. Uh, so this is very active. It's going to remain very active uh, for the time to come. Uh, I'll try to answer some questions that I can, but again, Please understand we can't give away certain aspects of the investigation. We don't want to negatively impact. We want to arrest the offender and hold him accountable for his actions. Was the building sealed where, where the rifle was recovered and the witness statements? I'm not, I'm not sure of that right now. Are there any threats online or on social media against the parade at all? None, none that I am aware of. Uh, certainly investigators are coming through social media to see if there's any clues or any information that they can uncover through social media that might help them with the investigation. So as of now, we have approximately two dozen victims that were transported to area hospitals. There's a number of hospitals. Some hospitals did require going on bypass due to receiving uh, traumatic victims in such a high number of them. Uh, so hospitals throughout the region, both Lake and Cook County, received patients from this and their conditions range, some critical, was, some serious. Was there any point when officers had sight of the suspect or made any contact with the suspect? My understanding as of now is they ran for the gunfire, however, the suspect ceased firing right around that point when they got close. And on top of the building, is this a building where he's able to discreetly or, or hide himself during the shooting or was he 
stepped on top of a roof and in plain sight. All, all indications is he was discreet and he was very difficult to see. The Any information on the agents might have of the stopped victim? Stopped the reload? Some witnesses thought he might have stopped the reload. That's something we're looking at. You know, certainly evidence technicians uh, are going to collect the, the rounds that were discharged from the firearm. Uh, another thing to remember, this is this is what is being considered as a very massive scene. It's very large. Uh, you have where the shooting took place at 2nd and Central, but as people fled from the area, uh, there's evidence and other things that, that may have gotten caught on their shoes, kicked around. So it's a very large scene. Uh, we're very fortunate to have the support of the FBI, uh, but we're not going to leave any stones uh, unturned. We're going to look at every angle of this uh, throughout the investigation and try to figure it out. As far as ages of the victims, the Lake County Coroner will hopefully be here for our 3 o'clock press briefing and we'll be able to provide some information. Um, what I know as of now, uh, several of the deceased victims uh, unfortunately perished at the scene uh, and it sounds like one of them was transported to an area hospital uh, where they're perished. Again, this is preliminary information changes, especially when there's close to 30 people transported to various hospitals. What I'll say right now is it, it was a high-powered rifle. I, I can't go into details just yet. We, we will release that information as soon as we can. We're, we walk a fine line with any criminal investigation where we don't want to provide too much external information that could negatively impact what our detectives are doing. Do you know if the targets were, the, the people targeted were marching in the parade or spectators or specific groups? Yeah, it's a very sad situation where it sounds like spectators were, were targeted and, and even those that were marching through. The parade was approximately three quarters of the way through. Uh, when the shooting occurred. So uh, very random, very intentional, uh, and a, a very sad day. Can you tell us anything more about the effort? We are working really hard to try to pinpoint where they could be. It's, it's, I don't want to give bad information. It, he could be in the city. He could be somewhere else. But we're looking into it. At this time, Nyfus, um, the county's office. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very large conglomerate of law enforcement that's working together hand in hand. Um, the Lake County Major Crime Task Force and the FBI are leading the criminal investigation into this along with Highland Park Police. They are very involved. Highland Park Police led the uh, initial incident response and incident command uh, when this was all uh, rapidly unfolding. As far as the search for the individual, we have uh, enlisted the help of several federal partners. We have the state police, we have NIPIS, uh, we have other SWAT teams that are on the scene here and all working together to further that aspect as well. We're working as hard as we can. I mean, and, and we, we want to make sure that uh, the information we're receiving and, and putting out is accurate uh, and that when the individual is apprehended, it's the correct individual. They're making, they're working, they're working hard. As far as the, the structure of the building, can you tell us how or he was able to get on top of the roof and make a quick escape? I might be able to provide that a little later. I, I don't have that right now. I Let's do a couple more questions. Sure. My name is Christopher Covelli, C-O-V-E-L-L-I, and I'm the spokesman for the Lake County Major Crime Task Force. You said earlier that it was up to individual communities to decide whether it's safe for them to hold uh, the gatherings today. Is that because so many police um, resources are here, or just because it could be? Here? Well, I think there's there's a couple reasons, a couple ways communities are going to look at it. Number one, you have a tragic mass act of violence that was random here today at a community event where people were gathered to celebrate uh, and the offender still has not been apprehended thus far so you know could this happen again I, we don't know what his intentions are at this point so certainly uh, we're not sure of that and on the other hand I, I think there's a lot of communities that uh, are not looking forward to celebrating after something like this happens right in their backyard as of right now, the information I have is there are six deceased. Six. six. And Do you have any more reports of people in the crowd helping those who were injured? There, there were, and I'm sure they will come forward in the days to come, but there were a number of heroic actions by members of the community, by police, by first responders that rushed in and immediately tended to the victims, tried to get them help. Um, more to come on that later. Right now, our focus is on the investigation and, and catching this guy. There was a so, report of our, a child uh, separated from his or her parents, or his parents, I believe. Any updates there in terms of a family who needed to reunite? So, there, Highland Park Police has established a family and friends reunification 
post and that's at the Highland Park Police Department. So anybody that's looking for somebody or anybody that uh, got lost or separated during the event, they can go there. Uh, the reunification is happening there. Again, folks. That people are sheltering in place at nearby businesses there. Are they still being told to stay there? Some, some people, business owners, employees of businesses have waited in their buildings for police escort. Right now the SWAT team is escorting people out of those buildings, getting them to safety. Uh, and being there for them so they feel comforted as they're, they're leaving the facility. But 3 o'clock, we'll be back. Thank you, folks.